Yet another movie to continue the trend that nearly every action movie set in the 1980s decade has several characters with tons of facial hair. Based on all of the Feathermen, Killer Elite stars Jason Statham as retired SAS operative Danny Bryce who gets called back into the line of action a year after his retirement by this Oman oil sheik who has taken his mentor Hunter, played by Robert De Niro hostage, and the only way that Bryce can free him is if he accepts the sheik's mission of killing these three assassins that murdered the sheik's three sons. As if that's not enough to assemble his old team and complete the mission, they also have this team called the Feathermen whose cunning leader Spike, played by Clive Owen, is pursuing them to make sure that the job is not completed. While Killer Elite was kind of a disappointment to me, the three leads in this movie, Statham, De Niro, and Owen, are all pretty solid in their own way. If you see this movie, to get anything out of Jason Statham other than him being the British ass kicker that he is, what the hell are you doing? Because that's the main reason why he's in this movie, to kick lots of ass. And he delivers once again. Clive Owen does his best with the villain character as Spike because the character is very poorly developed at times and he just really isn't given enough menacing things to do in the film to make you truly fear him. Robert De Niro I found to have the best parts in this film but the main problem with this character is that he is so heavily underutilized in which he really only appears in the first and last 20 minutes of this movie while he does have some pretty good lines to quip and also having some very badass action sequences at times. He just was so underused in this film, in which he does not even make an appearance at all between those first and last 20 minutes, which really disappointed me, because Robert De Niro is one of the greatest actors of all time, and that I found to be a huge letdown of him. Some of the action sequences are very well filmed, especially when it involves a shootout or an explosion, but when it came to a fight sequence, mostly a hand-to-hand -hand combat one, of course, there is one thing that kept on running through my mind throughout them. Zoom the camera out, please. Once again, we get another movie where the fight sequences are filmed in that stupid handheld way in which the editing cuts from one second to the other, just like that. I think the big problem with this movie, though, is that the director and writer of this movie, they're both first-timers in the feature film category, and that's where it just feels like they don't fully know what they're doing with the film. For instance, for all you Chuck fans out there who love Yvonne Strahovski as Sarah Walker in the series, which I really like Chuck, of course. I've seen the first three seasons, and I love it. She gets to play Jason Statham's love interest, and she's really only used in very overly sentimental flashbacks, which just got very corny at times. Whenever there was action in the final act, which it was decent at some times, it just simply does not know when to end, because there are at least four endings that could have been made in that last act, yet it just keeps on going. And when it finally gets to the real actual ending, it was one of the most anticlimactic moments, in my opinion, for this year of action movies. Also, the supporting cast is very weak compared to the main cast. It's the only real big name that you can point out in the supporting cast is Dominic Purcell, who plays one of the members of Statham's team. Otherwise, all you really get in this movie is nobody you'd recognize at all, except for one guy that looked like an Arab version of Jason Biggs from American Pie. That was about it. Overall, Killer Elite was a kind of disappointing action movie. While it does boast some decent action sequences and good performances from the three leads, it has kind of a useless supporting cast, and the fact that you have first-timers in the feature category helm in this movie, it just really lets it down even more. I am going to give this movie a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Killer Elite. You can expect a podcast coming up later this week. And also, maybe, just maybe, a review of Moneyball over a week in advance. So in the meantime, I'm Tyler from Kai Kirk Reviews, and I'll see you guys later. But before you leave, make sure to check out these reviews right here.